So let's talk today about CoQ10. And I'm Norbert Gleich, uh, MD, and I'm the medical director at the Center for Human Reproduction. Next to me, Dr. Barad, mm -hmm. who is my colleague, and uh, he's the director of assisted uh, reproductive medicine and research. Um, the topic today is antioxidants, and more specifically, CoQ10. Because CoQ10 has really become kind of in itself what one almost could call a super vitamin. At least patients perceive it as such, even though it is, of course, not a vitamin. CoQ10 is a substance, it's an antioxidant, which um, just very recently, in a, in a very fascinating study, um, was shown to have strong impact on what is called mitochondria. And mitochondria are structures in our cells uh, which, which basically do the breathing for, for the cell, in, if, I, if I can speak symbolically. So antioxidants are very important because they protect the integrity of our cells. And uh, it is only relatively recently that uh, in infertility and in pregnancy, antioxidants uh, became part of recommended supplementations. In infertility, uh, antioxidants are very important for ovarian function uh, and also apropos for testicular function in male and therefore we prescribe it both to infertile women and to infertile men who have medical issues with their gonads. Now there are many different antioxidants out there but CoQ10 has clearly become the most popular. Uh, and there are several reasons for that, not the least the price and, and uh, the, the ease of, of production. But even within CoQ10, there are differences. Uh, and it is important that you understand that. And the difference, uh, or a very important difference, lies indeed in uh, an aspect that applies to every oral medication you take, that is it, its ability to get absorbed in, in the GI tract. And there are not only better CoQ10s and worse CoQ10s uh, in terms of bioavailability, uh, but there are also CoQ10s with different abilities to get absorbed. And therefore, it is important that uh, you choose a good CoQ10. Uh, we recommend ubiquinol, uh, which is widely available. And even there, look at that particular ubiquinol's ability to get absorbed and get a ubiquinol that will give you a good absorption rate. Yeah, yeah, it's important because you can go to any pharmacy and see CoQ10 on the shelf, but, you know, CoQ10 comes, as Dr. Glacier said, in, in all different kinds of, of molecules. Ubiquinol is the active molecule. So when you buy just regular old CoQ10, um, you get half of what you get is not really biologically active. So Let me make one more important point since we're already talking uh, about uh, antioxidants. Uh, we see more and more patients who are taking a lot of different antioxidants. There is significant data in the literature that very clearly demonstrates that too much antioxidant is also bad. So don't overtreat yourself. If you take the right dosage of ubiquinol, that has good absorption, you don't need another antioxidant. Thanks for listening. And, and, well, let, and, and, and make sure, a lot of people will go to some website and see a whole list of things that are supposed to help fertility and they just start taking them. Please, don't just do these things on your own. We're here as a resource for you. Please share with us what you've, we'll, we'll discuss what you've read, but we'll advise you 
uh, you know, what's safe for you to take and what's helpful.